Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at modeling with straight lines. So in the maths A level, frequently you'll learn a new technique or practice in, uh, a mathematical technique, and then you'll look at how that technique is used in real world situations. So how you use that to model the real world. So let's take a look at an example here. Sam is emptying a bath of water. When he pulls the plug, the height of the water in the bath is 40 centimeters. A minute later, the height of the water is 28 centimeters. Assuming the height of water decreases at a constant rate, calculate how long after pulling the plug it will take to empty the bath. Okay, there's quite a lot going on here. Let's focus in on this point, assuming it decreases at a constant rate. That means that we can model this using a straight line. So straight lines increase or decrease at a constant rate. That is to say they've got the same gradient everywhere. So that's what it means to be a straight line. So let's see if we can draw a quick sketch of the situation. So I've got the height of the bath, which I'm going to plot on the y-axis. And then I've got the time, which I'm going to plot on the x-axis. Now I know that the, the bath starts with 40, a height of 40 centimeters and then decreases at a constant rate. Now I want to figure out what the time is down here because that's when the height of the bath has dropped down to zero. The height of the water in the bath is now zero. So what do I know already? I know that this is the point with coordinate 0, 40. And I'm also told that after one minute, the height of the water is 28 centimeters. So I also know that somewhere here, there's a point with coordinate 1, 28. Okay, so in order to work out what this point is, that is how long it takes the water to run out the bath, I only need to work out the equation of this line. Now we already know that the y-intercept is 40. That's already known. So I know that it's going to look something like the height of the water is some gradient that I don't know times t plus 40. And my job is to work out what that gradient is. Well, we can use our rise over run formula for that. So that's change in y divided by change in x. So the change in y that's going to be the difference between these two y values. So that's 28 minus 40. And the change in x is the difference between these x values, the difference between 1 and 0. So that's 1 minus 0. So that gives me negative 12 over 1, which is negative 12. So I now know that my gradient is negative 12. So now I've got my equation. H is negative 12 t plus 40. Well now the question is pretty straightforward to work out because what I need to do is work out what the time is when the height is 0 i.e. when all the water is gone. So if I set h equal to 0 I've got this equation to solve. I can add 12 t to both sides and then if I divide through by 12 I get 40 over 12 and that's three and a third but since this is a time question and I've got time in minutes it's probably better to split that into minutes and seconds so I've got three full minutes and then a third of a minute and a third of a minute is 20 seconds okay so I've answered the question now I've said how long it will take now part B, so explain whether or not it is reasonable to use a linear model in this question. Okay, so they're asking us to interrogate the assumptions that we've made, which is a really important job for all mathematicians to do. And all the people who use these sorts of things in their professional lives, like engineers and physicists um, and economists, they all need to um, question whether their model is appropriate. So thinking about as the thinking about water running out of a bath does the height drop at a constant rate well often these questions have some flexibility so you can argue either way but you need to give some good reasons now there's maybe some reasons to think that a linear model um, is not appropriate for the water running out of a bath 
Now, one reason might be that the sides of a bath may be sloped. Now, in your explanations, you really can go into quite a lot of detail here. So let's just have a little bit more space, go on to the next page. So, um, you know, typically baths are going to be shaped, now excuse the drawing here, baths are going to be shaped maybe a little bit like this. Now, what that means is the water might um, take quite a long time to go down at first because there's more water up at the top here in the and the kind of cross section of it. But as we get down to the bottom, the cross section is smaller. At the very least, even if we don't know whether it's going to be faster or slower, it's reasonable to think that it might change because of the shape. So one answer might be um, it's not reasonable. Um, since the bath may not have a constant cross section, so that's to say that there's uh, there's more water that's got to come out at various points of the height to drop down than at other points. Um, another, and you can really, if you know something about physics, you can really go into that here as well. I mean, they're just short answers, but they can be quite, uh, quite high level. So another reason might be, um, you might say that it's going to drain faster at the start because there's more pressure, there's more water pressure. So when the water, when the bath is full of water, there's a great deal of uh, mass of water pushing down on it and pushing it out of the plug at the bottom. So maybe it'll drain faster at the start. So you, you might be able to explain that here. And then as the water level drops down, uh, there's less pressure, so it might drain more slowly. Um, so uh, these kind of questions, um, they, are, they are tricky in the sense that there's not just one possible answer. Um, the thing that you've got you to do to ensure you get the mark is give a nice specific um, answer. So don't just be vague. Don't just say, no, it's not reasonable because water doesn't do that. Or yes, it's reasonable because I've seen that in my bath before. Okay, you need to give some kind of specific reason. So um, th these kind of modeling questions are going to um, appear quite a lot and we'll look at them in, in the context of quadratic equations as well. Um, and we're going to look at another one in the next video coming up now. So uh, I'll see you there.